Jason went to his mother's coffin to kiss her a final goodbye, but the shocking thing he saw immediately stopped the funeral. Jason gently locked his little fingers with that of an elderly male relative standing beside him as the funeral procession began. An atmosphere of mourning filled the church, as some men in black suits pulled the casket towards the altar. Jason glanced around the old local Gothic-style church to find some mourners wiping away tears from their eyes, and others shaking their heads in sadness. It felt so surreal to him. It was just like a movie scene playing out before his very own eyes. Who would have thought that he would lose his mom at such a tender age? Fresh tears raced down Jason's cheeks as he watched the priest perform the funeral rites. He was only seven years old. How was he going to survive without his mother? He had grown up without a father figure in his life. His mother, Sheila, was the only parent he had. Although Sheila's cousin Sam had tried to play the role of a father to Jason, he had a family of his own to care for. It had been Jason and Sheila all through, but now that Sheila was gone, he was left alone. And the church with Jason was a sea of distant relatives whom he had never seen before. They had all come to pay their last respect to Sheila and sympathize with the boy she had left behind. But they all looked like strangers to Jason. It was time for final goodbyes. As the only child to the deceased, Jason was allowed to kiss Sheila goodbye and say his last words. With shaky feet, Jason slowly walked towards the coffin. As he beheld his mother, who lay like she was just asleep, he broke down in tears before the casket. Clothed in white gown, Sheila looked so peaceful like an angel. Jason's heart broke into a thousand pieces as he stared at Sheila. With tears streaming down his cheeks, he stopped and placed a gentle kiss on Sheila's cheeks. Mom, why did you leave so soon? Jason cried as he lingered by her side. If the dead could hear, Sheila would have gotten up to console her son. Sheila was the only child of a multi-millionaire couple. Her father owned companies and businesses across the globe. As an only child, Sheila's father made sure she was properly grounded and taught the rudiments and fundamentals of business. As she grew up, she was thoroughly schooled in business. As the heir to her father's wealth, he ensured she was properly trained to adequately handle his business when he was gone. At 20, Sheila was already a college student. She was the top student in her class and she was offered a spot for a one-year program in a prestigious business school. She also aced her courses. When Sheila turned 23, her parents died in a plane crash on their way to a charity ball. This shattered Sheila and she grieved for a long time. After they had been laid to rest, Sheila was left with a vast wealth and the chain of companies which she had immediately inherited after her parents' demise. As someone who had been trained all her life for that moment, she quickly took over and smoothly continued the running of operations. At 23, Sheila had already made it to the top five most influential single ladies in the country. She was also on the Forbes cover page as the youngest and wealthiest CEO in the country. Despite all the fame and popularity, Sheila was a purpose-driven and goal-oriented business mogul. Unfortunately, Sheila had a weakness. Like an Achilles heel, she had a soft spot for love. Maybe because she lost her parents too young. Sheila desperately wanted to feel love again, and she sought for it with all her heart. But for someone as wealthy and influential as Sheila, it would always be difficult to tell who was actually in love with her and who was in love with her money. For this reason, she was always in and out of relationships. She dated different men of diverse status, politicians, CEOs, doctors and the likes. But none of them lasted more than a month with her. Many years passed and Sheila had still not found the one. It was not that she was unreasonably picky, but she always found faults with them. They either did not meet her standards, or they were in for her wealth. Sheila knew she wasn't getting any younger, and she became desperate to find someone who would love her for who she really was, and not for her money. Just like a wish made on a starry night, Nathan came into Sheila's life. They met at Sheila's friend's birthday party. Nathan was a 32-year-old banker with great looks. She had a great sense of humor and a vast amount of charm. Nathan was everything Sheila desired in a man. It wasn't long before their casual friendship blossomed into a beautiful relationship. For eight months, Nathan showered so much love on Sheila. He took her on date nights, shopping sprees and vacations. Though Nathan's salary was a drop in the ocean compared to Sheila's wealth, he didn't mind spending all he had on the love of his life. Sheila had fallen head over heels for Nathan. Finally, she had found someone who loved her for who she was and not for her money. She poured her heart into their relationship, and theirs was a perfect one. When Nathan finally popped the question of marriage during one of their dates, 
Sheila said yes without hesitation. Her dreams were finally becoming a reality. Their wedding was the biggest the town had ever seen. Sheila made sure it was the talk of the town for months. She had officially become legally married with her best friend and love of her life. Barely a year after they were married, Sheila realized she was pregnant. Happily, she broke the news to her husband. She was excited that their little family would be having an additional member. Sheila couldn't wait to see the joy on Nathan's face as she broke the good news to him. Unfortunately, Sheila got the shock of her life when Nathan exploded in anger. He screamed at her for not being careful enough to prevent a pregnancy. Sheila was speechless. For the first time, she saw a part of Nathan that she had not seen before. She probed to know why Nathan would react that way to what was supposed to be good news. But Nathan wasn't hearing any of it. He demanded that Sheila end the pregnancy. Sheila was enraged that Nathan would ask her that. They were legally married, so she did not conceive out of wedlock. They had all the money they would need to raise as many children as possible, so why was Nathan acting strange, she thought. In his defense, Nathan maintained that he wasn't ready to become a father yet. He had planned to spend a year or two with Sheila without the stress of a baby. He just wanted to enjoy his wife without a third party in the picture. Sheila was stunned. She suddenly didn't know the man she had married, but she had a strong will of her own. She blatantly refused to terminate the pregnancy. Sheila was adamant on birthing the child, despite Nathan's orders. And that staunch decision of hers created a rift between her and Nathan. The sweet and loving Nathan she had married suddenly grew cold and bitter overnight. He found faults in virtually everything Sheila did and would shout at her at the slightest provocation. Nathan, who used to be a dedicated banker who came home early every day, suddenly started keeping late nights. He would branch to a bar after every working day and come home very late at night. He looked forward to having Sheila complain because it was an opportunity for him to spew profanities on her. Sheila stomached everything with a brave heart. Her only regret was ever meeting Nathan. She had been blinded by love and missed the probable red flags before her. They lived like strangers under a roof. There was no form of intimacy and closeness between them anymore. Sheila nursed her pain and looked forward to birthing her bundle of joy because she had lost touch and love with her husband. Sheila confided in her 26-year-old housekeeper Corinne, whom Nathan had brought to the house when he and Sheila were still on good terms. Though Corinne was just a housekeeper, Sheila saw her as a great friend. Corinne, who was aware of the situation, would always give soothing counsel to Sheila. She would tell her stories and jokes just to keep her happy. Corinne became Sheila's one and only confidant. Some nine months later, Sheila delivered a cute baby boy. She named him Jason after her grandfather. The birth of Jason brought a profound peace and joy within Sheila. She couldn't believe something so perfect could come from within her. Nathan, on the other hand, got even worse after Jason was born. He grew bitter, wanting nothing to do with the newborn. Though Sheila wondered why Nathan would detest his own flesh and blood so much, she kept her thoughts to herself. Years later, when Jason was barely four months old, the situation in the home got so bad that the bitter couple contemplated separation. Sheila had loved Nathan so much, but if it came to choosing between him and Jason, she would choose her bundle of joy over and over again. Sheila chose to separate rather than divorce, because deep down, she knew she was still in love with Nathan. She secretly hoped that he would come back to his senses and go back to being the loving man she had married. Sheila also prayed Nathan would come to accept Jason as part of their family and maybe they could go back to having that happy home they once enjoyed. Sheila had bought their house in her name so Nathan had to move out. Though she tried so hard not to show it, Sheila was heartbroken when Nathan finally left. It pained her that she would raise Jason without a father figure. She planned to do everything within her power and resources to give Jason the best life. With Corinne as her support system, she raised Jason into a promising little man, showering him with all the love she could muster. The years went by smoothly, and Sheila never heard from Nathan again. Three years had already gone by, and Jason was doing pretty well in school. Horror struck one day when Corinne returned home with Jason after picking the little boy from school to find Sheila's lifeless body on her bed. She was out cold and unresponsive. Greatly alarmed, Corinne immediately rang the emergency line and the paramedics were at the house within minutes. Sheila was rushed to the hospital as the medical team tried to revive her. On getting to the hospital, she was confirmed dead after some tests. It came as shocking news as Sheila had not been previously sick. 
An autopsy was carried out, and the results revealed a high concentration of a certain drug in her bloodstream. Sheila had suffered high blood pressure after her separation from Nathan, so she lived on pills prescribed to keep her blood pressure at bay. The results instigated that she might have overdosed, leading to her death. Sheila's body was cleared from burial immediately, as she had stated in her will to be buried immediately after her death. This was to spare her loved ones much grief and help them find closure after she was gone. Jason stared at the coffin with eyes clouded with tears. An elderly man tapped softly on his little shoulders, signaling him to return to his seat. Leaning down towards the coffin, Jason placed a soft kiss on Sheila's cheeks. As he made to leave, Jason took one final glance at his mother and got the shock of his life. He just saw her lips twitch. Overwhelmed with shock, an eerie scream erupted from Jason's throat, piercing the solemn funeral atmosphere. This brought the service to an abrupt halt as the congregation clamored to see what was going on. Some elders close to the coffin moved closer, following Jason's pointing hands to know what had caused them so much terror. To their horror, they saw the corpse's lips twitch again, this time more obvious than the last. They fell back in fear and the whole church was thrown into an uproar. The relations were filled with a mixture of horror and relief. Sheila was alive. They called an ambulance and the body was quickly rushed to the hospital amidst screams and shouts of the congregation. At the hospital, doctors confirmed the speculation. Sheila was indeed alive. She had only been unconscious for a long period of time. It was revealed that the two doctors who had mistakenly declared her dead had carried out back-to-back -back shifts and were stressed out and mentally exhausted when carrying out their tests. The director of the hospital profusely apologized to the relatives, promising that the doctors would be sanctioned for making such a costly mistake. Sheila's relations were filled with great relief and joy. They took turns at staying at her bedside until she regained consciousness. Sheila responded quite well to treatments. Three days later, she regained consciousness. Jason was filled with unspeakable joy. He hugged his mom endlessly and refused to be separated from her ever again. The cops who had been called at the funeral suspected foul play surrounding the case. They found it suspicious that Sheila suddenly went unconscious and was almost buried alive. They decided to dig deep into the case. Once Sheila was strong enough to talk, they questioned her and her revelations were shocking. She revealed that the last thing she remembered before going unconscious was Corinne serving her glass of milk. The woman had suggested that it would help Sheila sleep well as she had been having trouble sleeping. Sheila had eagerly downed the whole content. She had felt dizzy minutes later, and that was all she could remember. The cops tagged Corinne as a prime suspect, and she was the last person who had been with Sheila before she slipped into unconsciousness. They immediately put up a search party to find her. They searched for days, but Corinne was nowhere to be found. Fortunately, some night patrol team finally caught her as she was on her way out of the city. Corinne, who had been in a hideout, had gotten news that a search party was on the lookout for her, and she decided to flee the city at night. She was promptly arrested and brought in for questioning. At first, Corinne maintained their innocence, claiming that she was wrongly accused. But the cops were not ones to give up easily. For four hours, Corinne underwent intense interrogation. When she couldn't withstand the heat any longer, she caved and made shocking confessions. Corinne confessed that she was Nathan's girlfriend. They had been lovers long before Sheila came into the picture. Nathan had actually married Sheila for her wealth. While maintaining his relationship with Corinne, though discreetly, he had hired Corinne as their housekeeper just to have her close to him. Nathan and Corinne had planned to dupe Sheila of her wealth to their own selfish interests. Their initial plan had been to persuade Sheila to make Nathan her next of kin after a few years of marriage. He intended to achieve this by being the best husband to her, thereby gaining her trust. Once he had achieved his evil plan, they would find a way to permanently eliminate her, making him the heir to her companies and chain of businesses. Nathan was so confident in his plan, he even went the extra mile to ensure Sheila wouldn't have a child to compete with him. To achieve this, Nathan instructed Corinne to slip control pills into Sheila's coffee every morning. Unfortunately, it didn't really go as planned. Sheila conceived and this aggravated Nathan as it pushed him farther away from achieving his plans hence his order to end the pregnancy. But Sheila had been a strong-willed woman. She hadn't listened to him and birthed Jason. He feared that Sheila would make Jason her next of kin in his stead. Almost losing his mind, Nathan sought to find out whom Sheila had penned down as her next of kin, him or four-year-old Jason. 
Nathan would indirectly mention it in many of their conversations, but Sheila would always find a way to evade the question. This pushed Nathan to the wall as he began to show his true colors. Indeed, he never loved Sheila. His marriage to her had been a carefully crafted plan to usurp her wealth. After they had separated, Nathan had charged Corinne to use her influence and position with Sheila to find out who her next of kin was. During one of Sheila's down moments, she lamented about how much she missed Nathan and how much she wanted him to be a father figure in Jason's life. Unsuspectingly, Sheila opened up to Corinne that she had actually made Nathan her next of kin, but with the situation at hand, she would be forced to change it to her son in a few days. Sheila had waited long enough for Nathan and since he couldn't come back even after three years, she had no choice but to change the will. Armed with this information, Corinne had gone to Nathan to reveal the information to him the following day. Nathan was stunned with the news. All along he thought Sheila wouldn't trust him enough to make him the next of kin. Now that he knew, it was time to put his next plan in motion. All he had to do was eliminate Sheila and all her possessions would legally be passed down to him and he only had a day to effect his plans. He convinced Corinne to poison Sheila's drink as soon as possible before she got the chance to change the will. Corinne, being sleek and smart, slipped a large dose of Sheila's high blood pressure pills into her milk. This way, there wouldn't be any trace that Sheila had actually been killed. The case would be tagged as overdose. Unfortunately for Corinne, the dose was only enough to knock Sheila into a coma, but not enough to completely kill her. The effect of the drugs had already begun to wear off when Jason saw Sheila's lips twitching. The cops wasted no time in arresting Nathan after the confession. Nathan was shocked to learn that Sheila was alive and well. When he saw Corinne in the interrogation room looking dejected, he knew his case was over. He had no choice but to confess to his crimes. They were both tried in the court and charged to life imprisonment on counts of attempted theft and murder. Sheila was deeply hurt that the two people she trusted the most had connived to betray her, even to the point of planning her death. She swore never to get entangled with a man again, looking down at her son, who still clung tightly to her. Sheila's heart swelled up with love. Why look for love outside when she had all the love she could ever ask for right there with her? Did you learn any lessons from the captivating story? Feel free to share your comments with us in the comment section. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.